Quick disclaimer, day trading is very risky. My very first year trading, I made over 300% return, made over 77K. Crypto, I turned a 4K portfolio and a 36,000. And also too, we run Team Alpha Trading where we help educate young, hardworking men and women on how to grow a small portfolio. So if that sounds beneficial to you, click that link down below and apply for Team Alpha Trading. And let's get into the presentation here. I know you guys follow us for penny stocks. I'm 100% switching over to futures. And here's the top four reasons why. Number one, there's no pattern day trading rule. If you're new and you don't know what that means, own an account in penny stocks if you have less than $25,000 and you can only make three day trades per week. Now, the way we usually get around that is we switch over from a margin account to a cash account, but even then you have to wait for your cash to settle. What's phenomenal about trading futures is that there is no pattern day trading rule. So you can take 10 day trades in one day, 20 day trades, 30 day trades, doesn't matter. Number two, I can go long and I can go short. So in the penny stock market, we're constantly looking for opportunities to go long on a stock so we can make money on the way up. Over in futures, you can actually go long so you can make money on the way up and you can go short as well. So for many of you, you can't short penny stocks. You don't have a big enough account on many penny stocks. You don't even have the option when you're trading futures, you can make money on the way up and you can make money on the way down, which gives you more trading opportunities throughout the day. Next part, open 23 hours per day, six days per week. So the futures market is only closed from five to 6 PM Eastern time every single day. And then on Friday, they close at 6 PM Saturday, they're closed. And then they open up on Sunday again. So basically if you're a hardworking person, you got a nine to five, you should 100% be trading futures because you got more opportunities to trade the upside and the downside no pattern day trading rule and it's open 23 hours per day six days per week and i don't want to hear your excuse to say i don't have time andrew when this market is open 23 hours per day six days per week number four i don't have to use my own capital which i'm going to explain here in a second so i will not be using my own money to trade futures i will be using a prop firm and the prop firm i'm going to be using is going to be called apex trader which i'm going to go over right here i'll actually drop the link down below it's atf.com apex trader funding but let's go ahead and explain this uh to the people that don't know how prop firm works so here's how a prop firm works in three simple steps number one you buy an evaluation account number two you pass the eval account and show them that you are a profitable trader number three you get a performance account that you can actually make money on. Now, I had to make this make sense in my head because I was like, why would prop firms give you money to trade with? Like, how do they make money? So how do the prop firms make money and why would they give you money to trade with? 80 to 90% of people fail the evaluation test. So for example, we come over here to Apex, we scroll down right here where they have the options. They have a rhythmic plan, which I didn't use. I use the trade of a plan. I'll go over that in just a second. But as you can see right here, you have to pay for these eval accounts. Typically they're like $180, but they're currently running a 71% off deal right now. So you actually get them for like 50 bucks, but 80 to 90% when I was looking it up online, 80 to 90% of people fail the evaluation. Cause there are some pretty hard rules to get around, which I'm going to go over in this video. They, they have a bunch of rules when it comes to trading that makes it easy to blow your account and fail the evaluation. So what they do is they just pocket the eval fees. And the thing is they make these rules because they want you to blow your account. Like, let's be honest here. Like these prop firms, they want to make money. Now I'm not saying anything bad about apex because they've given a ton of payouts to a ton of great traders but most prop firms like they know they make money from people blowing their accounts and i'm going to go over the rules here in just a minute prop firms also make a, a percentage of your earnings so for example apex takes 10 percent. so if you make ten thousand dollars on your funded account apex is going to take one thousand dollars out of that and give you the other nine thousand which honestly that's still a great split and also on top of that too you have to pay uh to activate the performance account so for example i come back over here to apex we come down here to uh trade of eight so for example let's say you go with the 50k funded account right here this is going to cost you about 50 dollars to take the evaluation and if you pass then they'll give you a performance account but they charge you an activation fee which currently right now for the 50k account is like 180 bucks you're like 230 dollars all in but they'll give you fifty thousand dollars worth of capital to trade with but what happens if you blow the account so you pass the evaluation they give you a funded account and then you lose you blow the account do you have to pay them back and the answer is no you just get your account taken away from you and you have to pay for an eval test testing in and you have to pass it. So like if you blow up a $50,000 account, it's not like you owe Apex $50,000. What they do is they just take the account away from you and then they make you pass an evaluation test again. And also too, they have a bunch of rules where they won't allow you to lose $50,000. In a 50K account, the max they'll allow you to lose is $3,000 or actually it's $2,500, I'm sorry. So they're not gonna let you, number one, they're not gonna let you lose that much money. And number two, you'll never have to pay it back because that's not how these prop firms make money, right? These prop firms make a ton of money on the evaluation fees and stuff like that. And they want you to take the eval test again because there's a good chance you'll fail it you'll come back have to pay the activation fee right they want you to stay in that loop comment down below if this is making sense so what makes an eval or funded account easy to blow and the big answer here is the trailing drawdown so like the thing is you can be a pretty profitable trader already but these trailing drawdowns make it super hard for you to let your runners run and uh let me explain to you why let me give you an example here so for the 50k funded account you have twenty five hundred dollars in trailing drawdown and this trailing drawdown accounts for unrealized gains so let me give 
give you an example. If you get into a trade and you get up to $2,000 in profit, and then you let it go back down to break even, you are now, let me, let me change that right there. You are now $2,000 in trailing drawdown, and you're only $500 away from blowing your account because you were up $2,000, right? Which is unrealized gains. So if you let it come all the way back down to break even, even though you didn't lose any money on the trade, you lost your $2,000 in unrealized profits. And that accounts towards your um, towards your trailing drawdown, right? So you really have to make sure you're moving that stop loss up and it's really hard to let runners ride because it's not like if you get into $2,000 worth of profits, you really can't let that thing go back to break even because if you do, now you're only down to $500 in trailing drawdown, which means you're probably gonna blow that account here soon. So that's the thing that makes it really hard and makes it difficult. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I, I blew plenty of accounts because of that damn trailing drawdown rule, right? It's just more of a, like, you have to know that you're going to fail some of these evaluation accounts. And then you just have to get right back on the saddle, take another one, take another one, take another one. And it's going to take you, you know, $50 to buy the account right now. If you get it funded, another $180. So like, you have to be ready to invest some money in this. And I'll go over at the end, like how much it would actually cost you, right? So why am I doing this? Why am I dealing with the trailing drawdown rule? Why do I think this is a, a big opportunity? What's the big opportunity here? Well, Apex will allow you to get up to 20, 20 funded accounts. I'm currently at 10 right now. So I've passed 10. I currently have 10. They're activated. And I'll tell you what my next steps are from here. Now, once you get multiple accounts, if you use the trade evade plan, so I'm pretty sure you can do it on Rhythmic too. I just don't want to speak for Rhythmic because I didn't use it. I use trade evade. But what trade evade will allow you to do is they will allow you to link all 20 accounts together so you can copy trade all of your accounts, which means when you put a buy and a sell order in, it's going to go out to all 20 accounts. So instead of having to go in with larger position sizes, you can go in with smaller position sizes across 20 accounts. Now, let me give you an example. So if you enter a 20 unit position in one account, a 20 unit position is pretty damn big. Like that's a very big sizing. You can't even do that on a 50K account. You can do that on a 250K account. But just for this example, let's say you enter into a 20 unit position in one account. So you will lose $6,500 in that account if price draws down only six and a half points, which is $6.50, which is very easy to do and puts you in a position of blowing your account, right? Because remember, each account has a trailing drawdown, right? So if you like lose six and a half dollars on a trade, you are all of a sudden, you just blew your account. Now, let's say the scenario, that's an account if you have a 20 unit position in one account. Now, let's say you have 20 funded accounts and you enter a one unit position across all 20. If that same price draws down six and a half points, you only lose $325 per account, right? Which means like if your drawdown is 6,500, you subtract the 325 and you still got $6,200 worth of drawdown in each account. So instead of, in this scenario, you blow an account. In this scenario, you lose the same amount of money, but since it's divided across 20 accounts, then the trailing drawdown for each account is only 325 bucks, and you still have a ton of trailing drawdown to work with. You're not even close to blowing your account. So that's the big opportunity here. Now, the next question you might be asking is, okay, Andrew, all of that sounds great, but how do I get a payout? What are the rules for getting a payout? So number one, you can only request two payouts per month, and you must grow the funded account above the trailing threshold. So for example, for the 250K account, the trailing threshold is $6,500. You must grow that account to $6,600. So it's basically the trailing drawdown plus 100 bucks. So in order for you to get a payout for the 250K account, you need to grow that thing up to $6,600 in profits before they'll even let you uh, ask for a payout. Now, you also, uh, one trading day cannot account for more than 30% of your profits. So for example, if you try to get lucky one day and you make $10,000, then that one day cannot account for more than 30% of your profits, okay? So like, let's say you make 10K in a day and you don't make any money the rest of your trading days, they're not gonna allow you to do a payout because it breaks their 30% consistency rule. Uh, and here's an image right here. If you guys wanna take a, a quick screenshot of this, or if you guys wanna save this for yourself, these are all of the payout rules. So. Uh, profit split that you get 100% of your first 25k and then after that is 90% and then next up the payout requests are two times per, per month one payout is on the 15th the next payout is on the 30th you must have 10 trading days between payout requests so again like honestly with me I'm probably going to be trading 20 days per month because I'm, I'm going to try and get uh, at least two payouts per month here uh, trading day goes from 6 p.m. all the way to 5 p.m. ESC the next day. And here's the minimum balance per pay period based on account size. So like, for example, right here, the 25K account, all right? So to take a, um, 
a payout, you need to build that up to 26,600. The 50K account, you need to be up to 52,600. And the example that I was giving you, right, is the 250K account, you have to grow that up to 256,600, which is $6,600 worth in profits. And then once you get to that point, if you've hit all of these other rules here, then you can take a payout. Uh, minimum withdrawal is $500. And then the maximum that you can take out per account is gonna be right over here on the right hand side for the first three months. So for the first three months, this is the maximum amount that you can withdraw from each account per payout period. So for the 25K account, let's say you grow it up to this $26,600, your very first payout, they're only gonna allow you to do 1500, but you can do that twice per month. So for the month, you'll be at 3K, right? And then of course, as you get into the bigger accounts, that's when it grows. So for the 250K account, you can get up to $3,000 per pay, payout period, which is $6,000 per month, which honestly, Many of you would be very, very happy with $6,000 per month. But just remember, after the first three months, you're able to take unlimited, right? So if you make $40,000 in an account and you like abide by all of these rules, then you can take a $40,000 payout after the first three months. They just wanna make sure that you know, you're know you legit, you're a good trader, so they really limit the first three months here, right? Uh, so here's the potential to make over the next 30 days, and here's what you came for, right? So if I get those 10 funded accounts above the trailing threshold, then I can take 4,000 from each, because remember, I could take 2K per pay period for the 50K accounts, and I'm currently using the 50K accounts because they're easier to pass. As soon as you get into the bigger accounts, they're a lot harder to pass. So for the 50K account, I could take 2K per pay period, so that's 4K per month, okay? The long term goal is to build the portfolio up to 20 funded accounts, get all of them above the trailing threshold, and then copy trade all 20 accounts with small position sizes across all 20. And uh, here's my earnings if I average 20 trading days per month. If I can average $50 per day, and that's 50 times 20 trading days per month, which is $1,000, or excuse me, that's 50 times 20 accounts, which is $1,000 per day and 20 trading days per month, which is 20,000 per month. Let's say I average $100 per day across 20 accounts. Well, that's $2,000 per day, 20 days per month, 40K per month. What if I average $150 per day across all 20 accounts because I'm copy trading 20 accounts. That's 3,000 per day, 20 days per month, 60K per month total. If I make $200 per day across 20 accounts, that's $4,000 per day times 20 trading days per month, which is 80K per month month i don't know anything else that you can probably invest like three four five thousand dollars in and be able to make you know 20 40 60 80k so comment down below if this video was helpful guys i know this was a longer one